got this Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt laser about two months ago now, and since then I've done a lot of hands-on learning with it, and I've found out a few things that I wish I'd known before buying it, and that's what we're going to get into in this video. First of all, the limit switches on this thing are quite sensitive. They are nice limit switches, and it's nice that it does have limit switches, but it actually became kind of annoying. So for example, I did a project where it was just under the max working area dimension, so I knew it could fit, and I framed it pretty perfectly so I could see it's not going to hit the sides or anything like that, but even still, because I was getting so close to the limit on the sides of the laser, these limit switches were still triggering and it was stopping my job. And so I ended up doing this one project and this one job like four or five times because I kept running into the limit switches even though I knew that it would fit because I had framed it very carefully. And so that was pretty irritating. And what I ended up doing is actually turning the limit switches off. And even now to this day, I still have them off because of this problem. I'll probably eventually turn them back on because there are some benefits of having those, of course. But for now, I'm just going to leave them off until I come up with a better solution or I'm just doing consistently smaller projects. Item number two is despite the power, the 20 watt module here, which is pretty high for a diode laser, if you didn't know that already, some of the designs that I've done have actually kind of surprised me with how long they've taken to complete. For example, this animal track plaque that my wife designed took about an hour and a half to fully complete on this laser. And it is on basswood and it is engraved sort of into the wood a bit. And so it's not just a light etching on the surface. And so doing that fill and burning it down does of course take longer than you if you were just lightly etching it on the surface. And before you jump on me in the comments, if you have a five or 10 watt laser, I know this is pretty fast for you by comparison, but this being my first laser engraver, I didn't really know exactly what to expect. And so it did kind of just surprise me how long it takes. So depending on the complexity, how much fill you're doing or the depth that you're cutting or engraving, the time that this takes to engrave or complete the job might be a little bit higher than you would expect. So it would be helpful just to kind of keep this in mind if you're shopping for your own laser and you want to do something that's going to be fast, right? Because you can, of course, get CO2 lasers that have much higher wattage and is going to be faster. Or if it doesn't really bother you much, this might be good. Or maybe even a 5 or 10 watt laser will be good for your purposes. It just depends on what you need. Item number three, I underestimated how much smell that this machine would produce when I'm cutting and engraving. And there's a couple of things I should mention here. So let me get into to it. First, I do run this laser indoors, but every time I run it, I do have it completely sealed inside of the Xtool branded enclosure that you can get as an accessory. And I also have it hooked up and vented out this window with an AC, AC Infinity 4 inch exhaust fan, which is a pretty powerful exhaust fan. And so I'm always running that when I use the laser, but even with all of this, it still gets pretty smelly, especially when I'm running like a cut or a deep engrave. It does okay for like a light etching, but with those, those hardier jobs, it does still definitely make it smell in this room, so much so that I usually end up opening this extra window that you can't see on the other side of me here and running a fan to ventilate more in this room, which is not ideal considering it's February right now and it's below freezing outside. So obviously it gets pretty cold in this room if I do that a lot. And so I'm going to have to figure out something else to do with this. I'm going to talk about this more in another video I'm going to do about the enclosure. And so I'm going to put a little card to that somewhere on the video. When I uh, publish that, I'll put that here. Moving on to item number four, because Xtool has their own proprietary creative space software for this machine, if you want to use Lightburn, which is the other software that's compatible with this machine other than that creative space, you have to take an additional step with the X tool that you might not have to take with an Ortur or a different kind of laser that you can use Lightburn with more directly. So basically what you have to do is you just have to go into the settings of creative space and do a few things before you're ready to move into Lightburn and use that instead. But the good news is this is not very complicated and actually Ryan from Buster Beagle channel has a really great video of exactly how to do this and I'll put a link to that in the description. That's the exact tutorial that I used in order to set up my laser. So thanks Ryan in the unlikely event that you see this video. Um, but anyway, it's not super complicated, but it is an extra step that you have to take that you might not have to take if you were using a brand other than X tool for your diode laser. Item number five is about the air assist. So I wish I had known before this that the competitors to X tool provide the air assist with their lasers. Now I of course knew that X tool sold it separately because right when I bought this laser, I pretty much at the same time bought their accessory air assist but those other brands do have their own air assist and in some ways they're actually better. So let's talk about a couple things related to this that I think are worth knowing. So if you look at the diode laser market, as far as I can tell, the two main competitors at the 20 watt laser module level with Xtool are SculptFun and also AtomStack. Now, if you look at those two lasers, they have a premium laser diode similar to this Xtool model or sort of in the same tier of lasers, if you will. And for both of those, they provide the air assist. And so this X-Tool air, air assist that they sell as an accessory is an additional 
$160 to Xtool. And so if you add that onto the price of their laser, it actually ends up being about $60 more for the Xtool, considering that the other two already had the air assist included in the package. And so it does make this Xtool look a little bit more expensive when you take that into consideration. But perhaps more importantly, the air assist that you get in the package with those other lasers have some nice features that this X-Tool Air Assist just don't. For example, the Sculptfun S30 Pro Max, which is sort of their flagship model that would be competing with this X-Tool D1 Pro, it has an Air Assist included in the package that can be controlled remotely with Lightburn, which is a really cool feature. You may not be familiar with how Lightburn works, but basically it has layers that sort of act as the layers or the structure or the sections, if you will, of the project you're doing. And depending on what layer you're working on, you can set whether or not air assist should be on or off. So for example, this would give you the, the ability to have a cut layer where the air assist is on, but then maybe a light engraved layer where you want to have the air assist off. And there are some reasons that you may or may not want to do this. And so anyway, that's a nice feature that the Xtool just doesn't have. And the Atom Stack also doesn't have this feature, but the Atom Stack does come with an air assist that also has a feature that the Xtool one does not. And that would be the ability to adjust the strength of the airflow flowing into the laser module. So this Xtool version of the air assist that you can buy as an add-on accessory, even though you have to pay an additional fee for it, it does not have either of these features of controlling the, the flow or the power of the stream or controlling it remotely through light burn. It's just sort of a very simple air goes through the hose at a fixed rate and that's it. Another thing that I wish I'd thought about before buying this laser is that just because a laser is rated as 20 watts does not necessarily mean that it will be the same performance as another 20 watt laser from a different brand. Thinking about it in hindsight, it seems kind of obvious, but this is something that is important to realize. A really great example of this actually comes from Brandon from the Make or Break Shop. He actually did a really great head-to-head -head comparison. So comparing kind of apples to apples of the 10 watt Xtool D1 Pro and the 10 watt Laser Master 3 from Ortor. In the test that he performed, and I'll put a link to that in the description below if you want to go check it out and see his full test, he took the same test card and he engraved it slash cut it with both machines. And what he found is that the Ortor laser, despite having the same rated power output, was able to cut at a higher speed and a lower power. In other words, despite having two 10 watt laser modules, the Ortor one performed better. And so I wish I had thought about this, but of course the catch with Ortor is that they don't have the higher power laser modules, at least not yet. So Ortor currently doesn't have a 20 watt laser. And so even right now in hindsight, if I was to buy another laser, I'd probably go with this X tool when compared to the Ortor because I can get that higher power 20 watt module. And the way things are looking right now, X tool might even come out and start shipping. I guess they've already come out with it, but start shipping their 40 watt laser module before Ortur is able to get the 20 watt version of their laser to the market. And the next thing I'd wish I'd known is probably the biggest inconvenience to me personally, and that is the Wi-Fi connectivity. So this is able to connect to a computer through Wi-Fi, but very importantly, it only works with the Creative Space software provided by Xtool. So if you're like me and you want to use Lightburn, you can't connect to this through Wi-Fi. You have to use the USB connection if you want to connect to Lightburn. And so this was particularly inconvenient for me because I wanted to put the laser originally in my basement. Right now, I'm in the office, which is where it's living right now because I only have a desktop computer. I don't have a laptop, which maybe it's not a problem for you because a lot of people I know do have laptops. But for me, I have to kind of run it wherever my computer is. So maybe eventually I'll solve this by getting a laptop or by running a wire from the upstairs office to the downstairs basement. But for now, it's just gonna live here in the office. And that is definitely something that I wanted to share because this might be something that affects you if you wanted to do the light burn X tool combo and you were planning on using that Wi-Fi connection. Now I wanna quickly cover three things that I actually really do like about this machine because overall, I think it actually is a really solid and well-built diode laser. And personally, if I had to do it all again, even in hindsight, I think I would probably end up buying the same thing. And there's a few reasons for that. So let me just name a few of them right now. First of all, as you may have heard from other reviewers, the build quality of the X tool is just rock solid. I've been using it, as I said, for several projects over the last two months or so. And it's just really well built, it's well thought out. And let me give you a couple examples of where you really see the build quality. First off, it has steel rollers and bars, which are sort of some of the core components that drive the movement of the laser head around the system. And so that is not the case with all other manufacturers. Some will use aluminum and others will even use rubber for some of those components. And so I would just expect steel 
to last longer and I think that you could even expect in some cases for it to run a bit smoother and so that's a plus for build quality there and another thing is the thoughtfulness that Xtool has put into the design of the adjustment points on the machine so I want to highlight two specific scenarios for that so first of all let's talk about the belts there are rubber belts that sort of drive the movement of the laser head around the machine and those belts have little screws on the back end of the laser that you can adjust the tension of those rubber belts which is really important because sometimes of course with different temperatures and over time rubber can kind of expand or flex and so to be able to just easily adjust that with just one screw on each side is actually a really well designed thing because I've heard I only had this one laser of course but I've heard that some other brands it actually is kind of a big hassle to adjust those rubber uh, belts there and so that's something that they've done well with this X tool model another example is the kickstand focusing mechanism here on the X tool so there's a couple things that are nice about this and this kickstand function isn't unheard of in the industry or tur actually has something similar but other brands like Adam stack have a separate tool that you have to use in order to focus the laser I think that would be kind of irritating and I'd be afraid that I might lose that tool and so having it built into the module is just a better design and a better experience in my opinion and on this module here from Xtool, you also get two adjustment points. So you get the main adjustment for up and down. And then there's additional thing where you can have adjustment on the other side that's sort of a more fine detail adjustment point that gives you an extra six millimeters of adjustment ability here. And so that's pretty nice and well designed in my opinion. The next thing I really like about the Xtool, in fact, this might be my personal favorite thing about the Xtool, is its upgrade ability. If that's a word, I don't know. But basically what I mean is that the Xtool has a lot of accessories that you can use to expand or adjust this to your needs. But importantly, you can also replace the laser module with a lot of different laser modules. So this base D1 Pro frame or system that you get here, it can use a 5 watt, a 10 watt, a 20 watt, and even the new upcoming 40 watt laser module that's about to start shipping with this one base laser frame. You do have to replace a few parts in order to get that 40 watt version working, but Nonetheless, you can use it with this laser system. Significantly, Xtool also offers a 2 watt infrared laser module, which is good for doing different types of metal projects. And that is something, to my knowledge at least, that no other manufacturer in this space has done yet. And if you look at the landscape of all of the accessories and things that companies like SculptFun, Xtool, Atomstack, etc. are offering, I would say that Xtool is at least competitive in those other accessory add-ons, but I think they're ahead when it comes to the laser module upgradability. And so overall, I think that the ability to change and adjust the system overall is just really great with the Xtool and it's one of my favorite things about it. Last but not least, in my personal experience, Xtool treats their customers really well. For example, they have a lot of supporting documentation and they have really clear instructions that come with the machine and they also have videos online showing directly from the company how to assemble the main laser system, also how to use accessories like the extension kit. And so all of these resources are really well done and really clear, which is not something that you get from every type of laser and other brand. You might've heard that Xtool also does an incredibly good job with the way that they package their products when you order something directly from the company. And this is definitely true in my case. I found the packaging to be frankly immaculate, which is not always what you expect when you order something online. Sometimes it might get jumbled or damaged, but that was definitely not the case here. And I was frankly blown away at how well they do with packaging these products inside of boxes and with foam and everything to just stack it up really nice and make sure everything is accounted for, everything is there, and nothing is damaged. Another thing I wanted to mention is that my personal experience with the customer support of Xtool has been pretty positive. I reached out to them asking a question about their laser safety glasses that I wanted to find out to decide whether I wanted to buy another pair or not. And they got back to me with a thorough response that completely answered my question in about two days via email. Now, they have no idea who I am. I had no YouTube videos about Xtools at this time. And so I would expect this to be relatively reflective of what they do for all of their customers. And I was pretty happy with that. If you have higher expectations when it comes to customer support and want something within an hour, you might not be happy with it. Or perhaps if you send them a more complicated question that they you know have to kind of do more research to maybe it'll take longer and maybe you won't be as happy but for me personally I thought it was pretty good and I was happy with it so overall all things considered if I compare this to the landscape of lasers even if I had to do it over I probably would buy again the X tool d1 pro 20 watt laser it's worked well for me but nothing's perfect so I wanted to share some of my experiences here in this video thanks for watching